The Lord be with you. Uh, for our time of self-reflection this week, and I might just combine two weeks into one for this session, and it has to do with feedback. So uh, the council over the last you know, seven, eight months, we've been looking at why God has uniquely called this congregation to exist. You know, what purpose does this little church serve in the midst of God's big world and God's big plan? You know, what, what bigger story are we a part of? What is it that God wants us uniquely to accomplish that no one else can accomplish? It may be something small, but it's going to have a big impact on the kingdom of God. And so I kind of look at everything I do as an experiment. Uh, and so uh, just for example, the, during the season of Lent, uh, you know, I wore my, all my robes uh, and then, you know, I'll be back to just my plain clerical collar and I preach from the pulpit. Uh, and my thought is, well, you know, during Lent and for high festivals like upcoming Pentecost and I guess for Ascension Day, uh, I'll wear my robe and I'll preach from the pulpit. Okay. Uh, again, maybe a little bit of exalting that. Uh, but why do I even wear robes and why do I wear a clerical collar at all? Why don't I just dress like this, which is the way I would like to dress? And so one bit of feedback has greatly influenced me because it wasn't just I like or I'm used to or I want because then I'm just competing for, you know, that person wants and that person likes and that person doesn't like and uh, I can't win that battle. But one person came up to me and said, you know, when I dress like this in a, in a collared shirt, uh, what, what, I think she called it a, a golf shirt. I don't golf. Yeah. So she said, and I paraphrase, when we come to worship, we come to hear the word of God, not a speech. And so the way I dress reflects that. You know, if I'm just wearing a normal collar shirt, it, does it communicate, hey, I'm only giving a speech, I'm giving a TED talk. You know, I'm giving some helpful life advice, or am I proclaiming the word of God? And that's where the clerical collar, you know, the blackness of my sin and the little tab of white, uh, you know, covering my throat where my voice comes from. Now, if that's what people get out of it, if that helps them connect with the word of God, then I'm willing to wear my, my otherwise very weird clothing. Otherwise, it's just weird clothing unless everybody understand what's it for. So that was helpful. Uh, then one other person uh, said, you know, that part in the confession where we say God punishes the sins of the fathers upon the children to the third and fourth generation. And she says, I don't like that. And I responded, you know, I, I don't care what you like. Your problems with the word of God, lady. No, that's not what I said. Um, but it is the word of God. Should I therefore continue to do it, even though after probing a little bit, I found it was confusing? And should we include as the regular part of, litur of our liturgy, our weekly liturgy, something that people don't understand, that people find confusing, that something that I would have to explain every single Sunday that we did it? Uh, and I thought, you know what? It's not the biggest part of it. So for right now, I'm experimenting with just having the Ten Commandments, which I'm really, really excited about because uh, we have all six chief parts of the catechism in our, in our worship service. I think that's awesome. So that was helpful feedback. Uh, then here's another bit of feedback. And this, this came from my godson. He took communion for the first time, not at our church. And here's what he said when he was receiving communion for the first time. When pastor gave me the communion wafer, he gave me a really big piece and I couldn't fit it in my mouth without choking. It took a bit of effort. I also got to drink from the common cup. That was interesting. I thought this was helpful feedback from a young one because what I, what I don't want to happen during the Lord's Supper is for somebody to be thinking about something other than eating and drinking Jesus' body and blood for all the benefits that Jesus' body and blood gives to us, right? Right? Because the whole point in all of this, all of this experimentation, if you will, is to connect people with God, for them to engage with God and with each other, to experience God in God's presence, right? That's the whole purpose. 
And so, again, one of the biggest pieces of feedback I have is from our Bible studies. Uh, one person said, uh, you know, that for the first time in their lives, they're reading the Word of God and studying it and talking about the Word of God and engaging with God and experiencing God for the first time in their lives. And again, that's, that is the point. It's not just, I like, I want, I'm used to, but how do we connect people to the living and gracious God, right? Right? That's what it's about, right? Yes. God bless.